Well, I'm doing some work today on this 1939 John Deere H, and I thought I'd show you guys a little bit about how this all fuel system works. So this tractor can run on more than just gasoline. Um, when they designed these tractors back in the 30s, there was another type of fuel called tractor distillate. There was also kerosene. This tractor would run on tractor distillate or kerosene, which were both cheaper than gasoline. That's why it has these two caps. If you see two caps real close together like this on these old John Deere's, the red one is for gasoline, the green one is for the all fuel. So how this works would be that you would start this tractor on gasoline, and you can tell just by where that's located that this, this is a much smaller tank. In fact, this tank probably doesn't hold about a half a gallon of fuel or gasoline. The larger tank goes from, you know, the little one's just this big. The larger one goes from about here to about here. So it probably holds, I'm going to guess, 10 or 12 gallons. I'm not entirely sure about that. But you would start the tractor on gasoline, kind of get the engine up to uh, operating temperature, and then you would flip this valve. This valve is right now on F for fuel, which means it's selected the larger tank. You would have turned this valve to G, you know, turn that valve sideways to G for gas to select this tank. And how that works is um, I'll show you the parts on the bench. I actually just put this tractor all back together. So I'm going to show you those parts on the bench right now. This is the selector. And you can see that the end has a hole and notched. And that engages the three-way valve. The three-way valve sits in the tractor. Let's see. sits in the tractor like this. So the selector rod comes out to the right. This port attaches to the line that goes to the gas tank. This port attaches to the sediment bowl, and this port goes out to the carburetor. The sediment bowl threads into the bottom of the main fuel tank on this port. This is the port that attaches to the three-way valve. And here you can see the on-off valve. And this valve is kind of unique to sediment bowl valves in that it, it doesn't thread. This valve will continue to turn up, is on, fuel is on, enabled flow, and if you turn it sideways, well this one's really sticky because it's brand new, if you turn it sideways that shuts the fuel off to allow you to remove the glass bowl and dump it. And this is the line that goes from the valve out to the carburetor. Okay, so now the parts are on the tractor and you'll see what I was talking about there with the sediment bowl. Okay, so the sediment bowl is threaded into the bottom of the fuel tank. It does have a shutoff valve on the back there. I think I showed you that on the bench. And then this is the three-way valve here. You see that green line coming out and going around? That goes over to this small tank. So there's the bottom of the small tank there. That's where, the, that's where that line goes. And then you can easily see the line from the three-way valve to the carburetor. So to make these tractors work on more than, you know, more than just gas, they had to do a couple of things to accommodate the all fuel or the tractor distillate or kerosene they burn a little cooler so the engine doesn't it kind of doesn't like to run on those fuels as much as it likes gasoline of course now we just run gasoline most I've never seen a guy run distillate or kerosene in any of their tractors that everybody just runs gasoline now but when you would select that you know when you would go from the you know, start it up and go from gas to, to the fuel tank, um, you would sometimes have to close your curtains. There's actually a, a set of curtains. I, I think they're still on this tractor, actually. A lot of them have been removed, but you see that little brown roll there? 
you can kind of see it in there, there would have been a knob here at one point. Somebody's removed the knob. But you would turn that knob, which turns a rod, which would crank those curtains down, and those curtains would block airflow across the radiator, which would cause the heat to stay in the tractor, and the radiator wouldn't be able to work as efficiently to cool the tractor down. So you needed that heat to stay in the tractor to keep the thing running good on that distillate. Another thing that uh, is very interesting to me, you hear so much about modern cars and they want uh, uh, cold air intake, you know, performance cold air intake, stuff like that, because cold air allows for more expansion, more compression in, it, in a combustion chamber, more power. Well, with these, these all-fuel tractors, they needed to keep that heat in there, and they didn't want cold air intake. And in fact, they, they used a hot air intake. So let me grab my flashlight again. The intake manifold and exhaust manifold are the same. So you can see how kind of big and bulky the intake manifold is. So cold air comes down the green line, goes through the carburetor into that big rusty manifold. The manifold is so kind of big and bulky looking because the exhaust gases circulate around the intake gases. They don't mix, but you can see this is the exhaust stack. You can follow that line right back to the same big chunky manifold. So the exhaust gases, it's like a two chamber manifold. The outer chamber is the exhaust gases, the inner chamber is the intake gases. So they're, they're using, the engineers designed that to use that hot exhaust gas to warm the intake air before it reached the combustion chamber just to keep the tractor running a little smoother. That's all I got on this one, guys. I think this is just a really cool thing that, you know, most, most people have absolutely no clue that this was a thing at one time. You could run a, an engine on gasoline or kerosene and not miss a beat. I hope I helped you with this one. I hope you think this is just as interesting as I do. If you did like this video, click that thumbs up button.